expect, or how many children do you expect to take in with these vouchers? Uh, the five million. How many will that serve? I think it's five hundred. Yes, no, that's twenty-two hundred. Uh, um, we haven't really been calculating that because we anticipate we have substantially more than than the five million. Um, but it's forty-eight hundred dollars per child for a voucher. So you can do the math. I'm out. Um, I'm yeah. out of the loop with preschool. But yeah. Is that the standard cost for preschool? Um, that is what um, we have pegged the, the voucher amount to be at. And this is with a lot of input from child care providers around the state of Ohio. Yeah. Now, it differs, excuse me, this a second, it differs a little bit if they're in a daycare environment where they're getting an academic program along with daycare throughout the day. But there are other funds that can be coupled with it. Um, that um, this supplements the, the daycare portion of it, um, providing um, more children access to, the, to a quality program while they're in. We don't want to be funding babysitting, is basically what I'm saying. So, and, and right now, we are spending $700 million on early childhood in the state of Ohio. But if you look at those numbers, those are primarily daycare centers for infants up to school age. And, and after school. It is not targeted academic programs um, at this point. We have 5,700 kids who are currently in public preschool. We have another 30,000 who are in Head Start programs, which vary tremendously in their quality. Some of them are very high, highly rated, some of them are not. Um, and then out of that 130,000 other children, we also have, I think it's approximately 20,000 that are in special needs preschool, special need um, early childhood education, which also includes much younger children, not necessarily three or four year olds. Um, those are children who have been identified as being developmentally delayed in some way. So you have that group. Um, but the number of three to four year olds, healthy kids who are just playing behind, largely due to poverty, is huge. Senator, and I, I'd be curious to hear maybe from some of the others, yeah. too, who testified. I mean, this budget, you're talking about the difficulty you could have finding $100 million. This budget includes a 7% income tax cut that, if my math is right, if it was a 6% income tax cut, it could easily fund $100 million. Um, is there, I mean, so the money is there. Is, is it's about a choice between an income tax cut versus early childhood care? Or do you believe that you should maybe find Care. Well, um, if it was left up to me, <laughs> um, I have a lot of other colleagues, and for many people, the income tax is also very important to the vi um, vitality of the state of Ohio. Um, so those are the sort of things that are going to be negotiated over the weeks ahead. Um, where this money will come from, um, I can't specifically say right now, but I think it is a question of setting priorities. And early childhood is one program that we have irrefutable data that tells us that the money that we invest in it is going to come back to us multifold. I don't think the same can be said about a lot of other things that we spend money on um, in the budget. And uh, so it is an investment, we'll use that word, and I think we need to really convince people that uh, spending $1 today is worth the 10 to 16 dollars, depending on what study you look at, um, that you give back in return over the lifetime of the child. Part of the problem we also have is that we budget, and you know this, you've been around here enough, we think in two year terms in the legislature. We always have, or always will. Maybe four years at the most, but it's basically a two year um, budget cycle. And with something like early childhood, you're looking at a dollar spent here today saves $10 10 years from now, or 15 years from now. And that sometimes is hard when you're trying to make your money stretch right now and say, well, great, we'll get that return down the road. So that's a challenge. From Senator Brenner, am I correct to understand the House is supportive of the voucher concept? Yes, I'm actually supporting a lot of voucher concepts, not just here, but in other education purposes. In fact, I've got a bill hearing on educational tax credits, but that's another issue. 
Uh, but to answer your question, also, I, I think there's plenty of money in the budget to be able to find it, uh, even with the tax cut. Like, I think we could probably cut taxes more. Uh, the revenues are coming in higher than projected. Um, I think that uh, with uh, the, we can continue to cut taxes. I think we're going to bring more jobs and businesses to the state. And I think that's the reason for the tax cuts to begin with. And uh, more jobs means more revenue uh, for all local governments, including the state government. So that money, I think, could, could be found in the budget. Let me first off say it. I'm not saying that Head Start is for a five day okay? <laughs> I just said that the Head Start program is very tremendously in their quality. Um, no, we only have a certain number of spots. There are a certain number of public preschools, and almost all of them have waiting lists right now. So a lot of, and those are free, but a lot of kids can't go to them because we don't have enough of them. So rather than just say, tough luck, you didn't hit the cut, we're saying, all right, let's go to one of the private um, preschools that are available in our community as long as they're high quality. You know, so that's that's a um, new option to let them go you know, to a private school. What will be the rubric for figuring out what, what constitutes a uh, high quality preschool? Um, that is all based on the work that's been done on the, the $70 million Race to the Top grant. Um, it is part of a national program that's been going on across the country to try to identify quality preschools and those people who are in that field and have been in it for some time um, know what a quality school is. Um, a quality school is going to have a child who's going to come out and be able to do well on the kindergarten readiness test. And if they're consistently having, having children that are not doing well, then there's something going on in that school. So $100 million, I assume that's $50 million a year, is what you're talking about, or is that 100 million? That's what, well, we, we may actually put the bulk of the money we get in next year um, for a couple of reasons. One is that um, the budget isn't going to get passed until the end of June. It doesn't go into effect right away, certain parts of it. Um, it's going to take some time to know exactly where the quality preschools are. Also, to be able to target a limited amount of money, because it's going to cost more than $100 million in the end to do this. Um, so we want to put the children who are most at risk and at greatest need. Um, so to figure out where we want to pull those children from um, are the sort of things that we don't want to rush into. We want to do this well. We don't want to look back four years from now and say, you know, we put kids in the wrong school, or we used the wrong school, or we didn't get the data we needed, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to take the time to do this right. But the time to start is now. It is not when we have all of our ducks completely in order. Is there anything special about that $100 million number? Nothing special about it. It was just, it was, an, it was a starting point that just sort of seemed like it meant a significant um, commitment. It, it may not be that high. I'm hoping it is, but it may not be quite that high. And uh, but whatever it is, it better be significant enough that we're going to be able to follow a certain group of kids and, and see the results of it and convince legislators down the road that this is the way to go and that they need to fully fund this program. 